Hey, seventh and eighth graders. Good to see you guys again. So um, today we're gonna be looking at step two of our project, our calligraphy project. Now, step one was getting to create your lines, okay? Now, I know that not everyone has a ruler, but um, you just wanted to make sure that they are at least straight and that there's a difference between some of the spacing. Okay, so as long as you tried your best with it, that's what matters. And as long as I can see that you are using line, okay, that's where the grade's gonna come into play here. Today we are going to be learning how do we do cheaters calligraphy in those different types of fonts. Okay, so um, you are going to have to pick a word. Okay, it can be your name, um, it can be a word that represents who you are, it can be your last name. Um, just pick one word and you are going to be repeating that word four times. Four different times. Okay, one for each style. So we have three styles, but the last one is a choice. So you'll get to choose which one you want to do again for that. Okay, now this isn't our final calligraphy project. This is just um, kind of like the preliminary steps that we're taking before next week doing our full on calligraphy. Okay, so um, what you'll need for this is you'll need a pencil. And then um, if you don't want to fill it in with pencil and you'd rather do it with a pen, grab a pen. Um, but for this, make sure you have at least a pencil because we're going to be doing some drawing and some erasing that's going to be necessary. All right, let's get going. Okay, so I have pulled up in front of me on my computer screen. I have my different fonts, my Gothic, my Italic, and my script. Okay, now um, I'm going to start with Gothic because to me it's probably one of the harder ones. Um, so over here I had put um, my Gothic title, so I know this is where I'm going to do my Gothic one. And um, I am just going to do uh, Remus's name. Okay, so um, R-E-M-U-S, that is his name. Um, we're gonna be looking at doing uh, grammatical stuff. Okay, so um, making sure that when you are, if you're doing a name, right, like Remus, um, you capitalize his name. So capital R, but then the rest are all lowercase. Same goes for any of your names um, and any of the words that you are choosing. Okay, make sure that they are written grammatically and I want you to have at least um, one uppercase in there. Okay, for each one of these, there should be at least one uppercase um, and at least one lowercase. Okay, so you can try all of them. Okay, so I'm looking at my Gothic thing and I'm gonna be um, following the letters for Remus's name, R-E-M-U-S. Now remember we have our ascending, our capital, our waist, our base, and our descending lines. The only time that you will use the descending line is if you have a letter that goes down um, below the baseline. Okay, so um, an example of that would be the Y. Okay, the tail of the Y comes down and it hits the D, the descending line. But I'm doing the word Remus and so he doesn't have any descending, um, descending letters. So um, what we're gonna do is when you're doing a capital letter, you clearly are gonna start at the capital line. And what we're gonna do, remember it's cheater's edition. So you're gonna imagine that um, the letter in front of you is written with just thin normal pencil lines, right? So if I'm starting at my capital here, I'm not gonna go above my capital, okay? So I see that there's a little tail to start and then I'm gonna bring that down. We always stop at the baseline. So I see that it kind of angles out and then it comes back up again. Inside of there, there is one of these little swish marks that then comes up and around like this. Okay, now I'm keeping my lines to help me guide, keep my letters as straight as possible. This looks like it loops out, touches my capital, and then comes down to my waistline. Don't worry about everything being um, exactly right yet because we're gonna be adding um, the thin and thick lines in just a little bit. Okay, and then from there, starting at the waistline, I see that um, this part of the R comes down and then comes back up. Okay, so I'm going to start with just regular lines doing that for all of his name. Um, when you're doing a lowercase letter, everything stays between the waist and the base. 
The only time that it goes above is if you have an ascending line or a descending line. Okay, an example would be um, the H. The H would start at the ascending line, come down, and then stay within the waist and the base. A descending line could be an example of a J. Okay, that starts at the waist and it comes down to the descending. So make sure that you're following the lines that you had drawn out. It is also important to have equal spacing between letters when you are doing, um, like writing the name or writing any word. So make sure that you have equal spacing. However you want to show that, that's up to you. Okay, so I'm going to do my E. I always like to start on the left-hand side just so I can kind of see the spacing. Okay, so my E comes down and then comes back up. Then this comes up here, comes down, and then connects. R, E. Now I'm going to move on to my M. My M comes over. Remember, I'm keeping in mind my um, spacing. There's a line that comes up there. Basically making ourselves guidelines. Up. And back down again. M. Okay, equal amount of space between. Ready to do my U. It starts like this. Comes down. I see that there's a slant in there. So anytime you see that there's an angle, you're going to want to draw that angle. Down. And like this. And then one final letter is my S. So my S, um, the closest mark to my U is this bottom part. So I'm going to make sure that I have enough space. So I make myself a little marker. And this goes kind of over. And it swirls like a normal S does. And then up. Okay, so I have the basic letters written now of Remus's name. Now we need to find where is it thick and where is it thin. Okay, so um, on my uppercase, looking back at my arm, I can see that it starts off skinny, like it looks thinner um, at the point, and then it gets thicker as it comes to the middle. So just like that picture I posted of the cheaters calligraphy, that's what we're doing with all of these. Okay, um, it's almost like we're making glorified block letters. Okay, now um, this long line here of the R is thicker, but then it becomes thin as I go down. So I'm just going to bring those two lines together. Remember, don't worry about some of these old lines that are in the middle there. Okay, and it gets skinny again, and then it ends with kind of a wider wisp here. Um, in the middle, I remember I had this little kind of S curve looking thing. It gets wider in the middle and pointer at the ends, which means automatically it's thinner. It curves up and over and around. Um, this part here, it starts thin and then it becomes um, thicker in the where it curves on the R. This part of the R is um, a thick line and it starts thick here, comes down, and then ends with the little wisp. Okay, next I'm moving on to my E. Okay, remember we kept the good spacing, so I'm expecting this to be the outside of my letter. So if I want that to be connected, I can connect the letter like that. So now um, the lowercase are a little bit tricky. You see there's lots of angles. Okay, so it's skinny, but then it becomes wide here. And then it becomes even wider as it angles this way. And then it ends with a thin wisp at the end. And the top part of the E here is wider. And then it goes into a thin line back. Okay, same over here. Um, I look for my thick lines. Break down. Thin line that I see turns into a thick line. 
that goes back down. Now I'm gonna zoom through this so that you guys don't have to sit and watch me do every single one. <laughs> So now that I have my outlines made, the easy part comes and that is filling it in. So you, like I said, you can do that with your pencil or you can do that um, with any other kind of tool. Um, I'm just going to use my thin Sharpie here. Okay, and anything that um, is thick, you wanna keep it thick. Um, if you see something that's supposed to be thinner and you actually made it too thick, um, this is just our first one, remember, so don't um, think that it has to be perfect this first time around. Okay, so you're going to go in and you're going to fill in that entire letter, that entire word that you made. Okay, you can see that I connected all of mine, but you do not need to connect them. Okay, but usually anywhere where there's a swoosh or it comes up, it continues on to that next shape and then stops. <laughs> Okay, moving on to our italic here, okay? So I'm gonna switch to my italic. Okay, so remember that um, the italic needs to be slanted. So um, if you are finding that you're having a hard time keeping your letters slanted, what you can do is you can grab a ruler and you can create um, a slant like this in between each letter. You do wanna make sure that it's about the same um, degree. So if you have like a protractor or something, you can, okay? Um, this will help keep in mind that you need to have a slanted letter. Um, and so like if I'm doing Remus, um, I can go ahead and I can kind of draw a line for the R and then the E and the M. And the last two, the U and the S. Okay, so like you can see that ooh, not all of mine are exactly the same here, but we're not going for perfection. It's our first time doing it together. So um, it's all about just practicing and trying your best here. Okay, so um, I'm gonna follow the um, italic hand um, outline that I gave you and we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did in our gothic but um we are not going to have as many of these little like angles okay because um italic is a little bit more of a smooth cursive there are still thick and thin lines and that's what you're going to be looking for okay so i'm going to show you how to do italic by doing just the time lapse itself okay so that you can see it go a little bit faster So there's my italic. Um, as you can see, I didn't do everything exactly the right way. Um, if you were to can be comparing it to the screen in front of me with all the letters. But um, what we're going for here is for you to try your best. Okay, my spacing's off in between my letters. Um, I do find it harder in italic to be getting the correct spacing. So if you want to measure out your lines, you can do that. If you are somebody who likes to make sure everything looks exactly right you can space them out a little bit more accurately okay but um there is my it italic demo okay and the last one is script okay now um script is a little bit more like handwriting okay remember everything is going to be um everything always connects in calligraphy all right um and so you want to keep in mind still our a c w b d ascending capital waste base and descending and I did that here too remember I started at my capital for my capital letter I didn't have anything that needed to be descended and I didn't need anything that needed to be um, ascended but I think for the purpose here of showing you how to do ascending and descending I'm gonna pick um, a different word that has a mix of everything in there okay so um, I'm going to do 
Um, let's think of a word here that has an ascending and descending letter. Um, how about um, you know what? I'm not really thinking of one. How about um, in my choice here? I'll do Remus for script, and then in my choice here, I'll show you how to do ascending and descending just letters by themselves. Um, so in our script here, um, it's the same thing. You're gonna pick your uh, you're gonna pick your name or whatever it is that you've been repeating. And um, this time though, script tends to um, be kind of wibbly wobbly, okay? So it can go um, diagonal, it can go straight up and down. Um, it's just gonna be all sorts of different ways. And we're gonna do the exact same that we did these other ones um, by drawing just our simple letters first and then adding that second line to make something appear like it has a thicker line to it and versus a thinner line. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, um, the script is a little bit different because it can be a little more swooshy um, and it's a little bit more fluid, almost like a handwriting. Okay, um, I do prefer kind of a script, but I do um, kind of like doing the gothic as well, very straight up and down letters. Um, so now for the choice, um, we are going to show you how to do like ascending and descending. So um, don't mind my dog drinking in the background here, loudest drinker in the world. Um, so choice here for the ascending and the descending. In this one, you can choose for you guys. You're going to choose italic, gothic, or script. It can be any of those three. And you can do a new word. Um, or if you want to try to make the one that you did before better, that's going to be your choice. Um, but I'm going to show you on here how to do like ascending and descending letters. Okay, so for example, um, the H. Okay, so if I'm going to do, I'm going to split this actually into three Okay, so that you'll get to see an ascending and descending of each type. Okay, so this is going to be gothic, this is going to be italic, and this is going to be script. Okay, so that you guys can see the different kinds. So um, for um, gothic, um, I'm going to do a letter that is both ascending and descending, the lowercase f. Okay, so um, it starts at the ascending line and it goes, swishes up. Then it, you can see it kind of starts to angle and it comes down. And then that tail is going to come all the way down to our descending. And I didn't leave myself enough space here, but it's going to kind of go over like this. Okay, and then my um, F is going to be at my waist here, which is our middle. Okay, and that kind of goes up and kind of go to egg and all like that. So then if I were to do the cheater's edition, right, where I draw my thick line, it's going to become a little bit thinner, but then it's going to start to get thick again as it comes down. And then that flows into our final letter there. This kind of goes over like this, okay, to create the F. And so then if I were to do um, then a plain old descending um, that connects, um, or that's next to, I should say, my F, um, for example, a G, Okay, um, same thing. I'm going to just draw my basic line. Um, the middle of that letter stays within my waist and my base. It's our home, remember? Okay, and then uh, I'm gonna have my letter come all the way down to my descending and come over. And then again, go ahead and start showing those thick and thin lines. Um, this kind of goes down like that, then up. This goes into here. And then it's kind of a skinny 
line, thick line, thick, skinny. All right, so we have our ascending and descending like that lowercase f, and then the G would be like that. Um, and then a plain old ascending would be um, like the D. Okay, so it's the same staying your waist and your base, um, following those angles down, back up again. Um, this goes all the way to my ascending line, back down and out. And again, finally finding those thick and thin lines. And then Oops, did that wrong. So it kind of swishes out from that. Then it starts to become thick again. And then you would just fill that in. Okay, so that is how you do um, the Gothic. And then I'm gonna just zoom through the italic and the script. <laughs> Okay, so that is how you're gonna be doing um, the first uh, practice steps to our Cheaters version calligraphy. Okay, you need to have finished by next Wednesday the italic, the gothic, and the script, as well as your choice box. Remember, my choice box is different than yours. I want to show you ascending and descending letters, but you are choosing your favorite of the three, and you are doing another example in this bottom box. Okay, you need to upload it by next Wednesday into the individual Google Doc that I've sent you. Um, it's easier for me to keep track of if everyone just uploads it into their own individual Google Doc. So we will see you next week Wednesday then. Remember, no school on Monday. Bye, guys.